Ooh, look at this. month we got about a um, few days left Thursday we got two days Monday Tuesday close out King is on the line most shows wins right and uh, so just keep things into perspective Cole made up a whole lot of ground yesterday so congratulations on that one more celebration for Cole yesterday so it's, it's a close cool race today I think Eric's up on the board. I think Eric's up Ryan's still uh, trying to Make it in with the starting gates, but he'll do that. <laughs> Plus that was yeah. yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> um, just want to kind of keep things into perspective, keep those things in your mind, write them down, put them up in front of you so that you can remember these things, overcoming objections, sales and starts to know. With that, with that being said, kind of step out of that for just a minute. I mean, I know we got leads coming in, but. Uh, Step out of that for just a minute to be able to get some goodness from the Alaskan assassin himself. <laughs> the man who, uh, by many titles, but uh, we all know him as Frank the Tank. Please welcome him up. Yeah, I don't know if y'all are ready for this. It's probably the first time. I'll just try to Rafael, I don't know if you're ready for this, but I'm on your head. We might not talk again after this. <laughs> oh my God. I don't know what to do. So, this isn't going to work yet. You better stop doing what you're doing for just a minute right there. Seriously. Uh, just hold that, hold that thought. We'll get to that in a minute. I'm going to hand this out. We're going to have a little bit. Uh, this is interactive. Uh, I don't have one for you. Okay. I only got the most. there. So, what you're going to do is. <laughs> You guys know that I talk a lot about, and you don't, but I talk a lot about uh, cross-country skiing. I did a lot of that, and today I'm going to talk to you about, uh, today's title is Silver Clister and the Wide-Eyed Kid. The problem with that is none of you know about Clister, there's a couple things you don't know about skiing, and I'm going to teach you real quick about that, so it's interactive. What your job is today, as far as these are concerned, your only job is to learn those terms on that piece of paper. Okay, that's it. That way we have a basic understanding. We're gonna have a we're gonna re-reference this as we go along, okay? So you kind of know what we're talking about. So the first one we'll start right here. What does your say, Devon? Kick zone glide zone. Kick zone glide zone. Okay, so you have the guys I need to focus on this quick lesson. You need to compare cross country skis. We're talking about um, there's two different ways to see ski. Who has diagonal stride? You that? Okay. Right field is gonna be diagonal stride. Diagonal stride, right field, this is what it means. There's two ways to cross country ski. One is the old way, it's called long long, it's called classic, it's called traditional. You ski in the grooves. There are things you can't do. Today we're going to be talking about that sort of skiing, classic skiing. Okay? The other one is called freestyle or skating. Skating is where you skate motion, you don't have to be in the tracks, you can if you want to. When you're in a diagonal stride race, you cannot do the skating motion, it's not legal. Okay? What does your say? Glide zone, kick zone? Kick zone, glide zone. Okay, on a classic pair of skis where you're skiing in the tracks, you have two problems. One, your skis need to go as fast as they can down the hill, but you also have to get up the hill, okay? You've got a ski that's about this long, about 210 centimeters. The tips and the tails of it, or the majority of the ski is the glide zone. The part in the middle is called the kick zone. It's what gets you up the hill. What does your say? Camber and glide wax. Camber and glide wax. Your skis aren't flat. They have a bow to them. It's called a camber. If you hold a pair of skis together, they have a massive bow about this much distance between them. Okay? The trick to that camber is you have to push that camber down to get up the hill. Okay? Glide wax is the wax that you put on the other part of the ski, the tip and the tail. Glide wax goes in the glide zone. Glide zone. Okay? The kick zone, is that what it says? Mm -hmm. Is in the camber. camber. What does yours say? Cluster. Cluster. Clister is a horrible, gooey mess that comes in a tube with a, a, a consistency of epoxy. You put it on with a spatula, you put it on with a torch, you use it once in a while. We're going to talk a lot about Clister. What does yours say? Kick 
and kick wax. Kick. Kick means that's what you do to get up the hill. My kick is no good. It means that you're slipping. You can't get up the hill. Kick wax. Cluster is a kick wax. Goes in the Exhaust. which is in the chamber. All right. What does yours say? Freestyle skate. That's pretty much a, a crash course as far as that is. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to talk a lot about that. So I want you to have some frame of reference. The middle of the ski is a kick zone. That's called the camber. That's where the wax goes, and the other part of it is called the glide zone. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. Yep. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to share with you something somebody told me a little while ago from a guy that I have a great deal of respect for. He told me something very interesting a little while back. He said, the trick to success is preparing your whole life for one moment and taking advantage of it when that moment comes. Mm -hmm. The trick to success is preparing your whole life for one moment and taking advantage of it when that moment comes. And I just thought, every once in a while I hear things, they're tidbits, and just wanted to share that with you guys, okay? Uh, we're not done with our lesson. We need everybody to stand up. Okay, I'm going to show you, and you're going to involve, push your chairs away because we're going to do this in units. You need a little bit of room. You might know these as telemarks, you might not. I'm going to show you with the basics of diagonal stride, classic, right? Diagonal stride? Okay? And why it is that kick is so important. So the first thing I want you guys to do, and what we're going to do is we're just going to put our hands behind our head like this because it's the easiest. And I simply want you to take a step forward, doesn't matter which foot, just like this. Okay? Pretty simple. But we're going to do it in skier fashion. So we're going to bend forward a little bit, and we're going to put our leg out there. We're going to take a good, good step, a big step. Your knees bent. Your knees bent. Very, very good. I like that. Brian, you got to stand up a little bit. There you go. Okay. And then step back. And do it again. Okay? And step back. Do it the other foot. Okay. Go kind of like skiing. The reason you have your hands behind your head is for a little bit of balance. Okay? Well, obviously, we know that's not skiing. We're not done yet. That's not quite skiing because you don't want to stand like that. So, this is what you do do. We're athletes here. We like to say that we are or were or wanted to be at one time. Go ahead. Put your hands back in your head. What we're going to do now is we're going to do is called telemark. It's the basic motion in cross country skiing. Okay? As far as diet and stride is concerned. We're going to go like this. Just really. Right? Good. Okay. But now we're going to do it like athletes do it. We're going to do it with a little bit of technique. Okay? We're going to pop our hips and we're going to drive that leg forward. We're going to do this leg forward. We're going to do this leg forward. Okay? There you go. Good. So you think you can make Okay? Now, if you really want to get skiing, we're going to put our arms in there. So we're going to hang your arms down. Right leg, right, left arm. So ready? Nope. Right? Relax. Nope. Relax. Other arm. Other arm. Okay? And we're going to go like this. Okay, oh my god, we're stretching out. And we're having a good technique. And we're having a good technique. We're stretching out. And we're leaning forward and we're popping our hips. And now we're skiing. Okay. Now, go ahead, sit down. Imagine doing that on a one inch, one pound piece of plastic on a skating rink. You'd want something on the bottom of your foot to propel you forward. You wouldn't go anywhere. It's hard enough just to do on boots, okay? That's the basic, I know, right? That's the basic motion of uh, cross country skiing. So as we talk about this, now you not only know some lingo, but you have some idea in your head what that's about. Okay? All right. In the world of cross country skiing, there are four weather conditions that can be described by the waxes that you use. In other words, if I said to you it was a such and such a day, you'd be like, I know what kind of day that is. The first one of those days is prominent in Alaska. It's called a start green day. Start green is a wax that we use when it is very cold and very slow. Just so that you know, when it's cold outside, it is slow, meaning your skis do not glide very fast and it's a lot of work to make. That's a start green day. Another day is what we call an extra blue day. We won't get into the colors and why that is. A really super blue or an extra blue day. And if Jody asked me, hey, how is the skiing conditions? yesterday and I said, oh man, it was an extra blue day. Even if he had never heard that term used that way, he would automatically know. It had to be between about 15 and about 25 degrees with hard packed old snow. It was absolutely perfect. It wasn't too hot. It wasn't too cold. It wasn't fresh snow. It was great. It's easy to ski. It's easy to get kick wax. It's, it's reasonably fast. It's a great, great day. Those are just perfect, perfect days. Another day, would be called a Syrah F day. When Syrah F came out, 
when it first got introduced onto the scene in the late 80s and early 90s, it was so much faster than any other wax out there. It's about the price of cocaine. It's about $100 a gram. You don't spill it on the floor. It has floral carbons in it. You have to wear a mask when you put it on your skis. It's ridiculously expensive. If you don't have Syrah F on that day, don't go to the race. It's that much different. It's ridiculously fast. And it's, those are beautiful days, tough skiing conditions, though. Hopefully you're in a skating race where you don't need kick whack, because those days can be tough. And that's about 30 degrees outside. Typically it's warmed up just a little bit. It's starting to get a little bit uh, moisture in the snow. And it is, uh, it is it's, it's good sledding, as they say, and it is rocket fast. And the other day is Cluster. Cluster. Especially Silver Clister. Silver Clister is, again, it is a horrible, gooey mess that you put on with a spatula and a torch. And it's not gooey like um, slime goo. It's gooey like epoxy glue. And anybody who's ever cross-country skied, especially as a child, always had their Clister gloves. Because at some point, you got your hands into the middle of the Clister. Because when, that's what happens. You avoid this at all possible dealing with little kids because it is a train wreck of an operation to put together. And when you're skiing on Clister, it is very, very, very difficult. The first time that I ever skied on Silver Clister, I was a first grader. I'd been skiing for a year. Clister conditions are ridiculously icy. It's been very warm and it's cooled down a little bit. The snow around you is snowball type snow. Warm weather in winter places comes with wind. Typically, there's debris and stuff in the trail, and I mean, it's warm. It's 45, 50 degrees. It is ridiculously fast, boilerplate icy conditions. Downhills are scary to, scary to death, and it's about the only thing that you can use. If you're using Clister, that's what I mean, it's because it's the only thing that works. If you're, if you're using Clister, it's because it's the only thing out there that works. You will try and try and try to avoid anything else, okay? My first grade experience with skiing in Clister was typical. They handed me the skis with the camber in the middle and said, don't touch the middle of the skis, and you're about this big, your skis are this big, so where do you touch them? You grab them right in the middle. And I got the little pieces on my glove on the ski. And well, I had it during a race, of course, and it was a train wreck. And what happens is, is if you get off the trail and you pick up a little piece of debris, then your ski starts making a snowball. I've seen people come in with their skis are only this thick and this much snow on the bottom and they can't even finish the race. It's what calls icing up. You can't get off the trail. You can't run over debris. You can't stop your skis from moving. And unfortunately, it's the only thing that gets you up the hills. My first experience with Clister, racing on silver Clister to be exact, went just as expected. Everything went wrong. The skis iced up. We got to do, we're just hoping the race is over. Okay. Fast forward six years. The next time I get on Clister is in the seventh grade. Now on this race, in the seventh grade, I was a much better skier. I had dealt with this situation, although I hadn't dealt with Clister uh, on several occasions before. And that race went a lot better. And one of the reasons that that race went a lot better was because my whole life I had been told by my father while I was skiing because I wasn't necessarily really that good. He always told me, you just concentrate on how you ski. You concentrate on the technique. And one of these days, it's all going to come together. And on this particular day, it came together for me quite well because it has a, has a certain amount of technique to be able to ski in these conditions. The better technique you have, the easier it is. Okay? So that's a little background on on, on a clister. We're going to get into that later a little, little bit. The trick to success is to prepare your whole life for something and to take advantage of it when that moment comes. The trick to success is to prepare your whole life for something when that moment comes is to sink your teeth in it, suck the marrow out of it, take full advantage of it. Right? right. Not maybe the trick, but it's a trick. So the guy who told me that, who I had a great deal of respect for, I thought about it, and I thought about it, and I thought about it, and it sounded really cool to me until I thought about it, and I decided, I don't know if I'm hearing that correctly, but I think maybe, I think he just told me I can't be successful. And the reason I think that is because I could make the argument that I haven't prepared my whole life for anything, except maybe be homeless. Well, I've been 
that not too long ago. Because if the trust of success is to prepare your whole life for something and take advantage of it, and I stop and I think about it, I haven't done that. And so, as I thought about that, that didn't set really well with me because it sounded like such a great thing. It's awesome. I'm 42 years old. I don't want to start now preparing for something. My whole life is, you know, I'm running out of time. These things loom heavy on my head and in my heart. And as I did many times, I started thinking about my past, and I kind of started thinking about skiing. And I started thinking about cluster. You see, here's the thing about skiing on cluster. That day of the race, our man, the man came up to me, our coach, who was extremely strict and was not this kind of an individual. He pulled me aside with three or two other people, and he said, I don't think that you have to ski on cluster today. We're going to try something else. I've got this other stuff we're going to try, and I want you and you two to go out and see if it works. And the one person bowed out immediately, because if it doesn't work, you can't move. So me and this other person went out and we skied on it. We tested the wax before the race, and it worked out well. And we came back and said, it's close. I don't know how good I feel about this, so we made it work. He pulled me aside and he said, today is your day. It's cluster day today, and today is all about going fast. And he says, you're good enough. So not everybody here is. You just go do what you know how to do, and you focus on what you do, and you're going to have a great day. I'm going to tell you a little secret about myself when it comes to skiing. I never won a race until I was in the seventh grade, and I skied from the first grade every day of my life was cross-country skiing, and we were more competitive than most high schools are in, in any sport. It's all we did. It's all our community did. It's all our families did. We lived and breathed and died cross-country skiing. We did not have a gymnasium in the elementary school we went to. We skied and ran every single day. That was PE. That was recess. We loved it. So it was extremely competitive. I never won a race until I was in the seventh grade. What happened on this day was this guy came up to me and he told me, you're ready right now. You go do what you've had to do. The thing about that is, is you don't get to practice skiing on Clister every day, especially in Fairbanks, Alaska, because here's the news. You don't ski on ice every day. Usually it's cold and slow and stark green conditions. 20 below zero, very easy to deal with. And that's it. It doesn't warm up and get crazy icy. Plus, you condition the ski trail. So when it starts to get that way, you do things to them to try to avoid things like clister. I had skied on clister one other time in my entire life. I had skied on real ice, boilerplate ice, as they call it, one other time when I was a first grader. How is it possible if I'm ready to ski on ice right now? How's that work out? Okay? As I thought about that, I thought about what this gentleman had told me. The trick to success is to prepare your whole life for something and take advantage of it when that moment comes. And no disrespect to that person at all, but I thought, well, what if it read a little different? Or what if, while that's absolutely true, there was another truth? What if it read, the trick to success is to realize what you've prepared your whole life for, even though you haven't done it on purpose, to realize what your whole life has prepared you for, even though it might not have been done on purpose. See, that man came to me and he said, it's push your day. It's go fast day, and today is your day, because he knew that technically I see extremely well. He knew that I could get up those hills, which was based on technique, and I wasn't going to have a problem. He knew that it was going to work out for me. He knew that the other people, most of who were potentially probably going to beat me, it didn't matter. He knew that day. See, I didn't know I was good enough until someone came up to me and told me I'm good enough. Well, that works out great, but the problem is in the race of life or the game of life, a lot of times people don't come up to you and they don't tell you that. Okay? It's clister day now. That's what I think. I think it's clister day now. I think it's go fast time now. And I say that to the collective of the room. It might be. It might be that it's cluster day now. Okay? See, it's not about, not just about what you're good at. Because you have to be very careful about what you get good at in life. You can be really good at borrowing money. You can be really good, as I am, as pushing it right to the brink of when it's all going to come crashing down and somehow surviving through it. You can be really good at relying on friends rather than yourself. You can be really good at masking your situations by being a smart ass. You can be really good at procrastination. You can be really good at a lot of things. 
You can be really good at the nice guy who never ever makes a decision in his life and just follows people around for the rest of their lives. You can be really good at You have to be careful about that. I think that right now it's cluster day. I think it's go fast day. And it's not about perfect conditions. I think we wait around a lot of life for perfect conditions. Clister is not perfect conditions. It's as far removed from perfect conditions in the cross-country skiing world as you can possibly imagine. You try to avoid it. If you can reschedule the race because it's Clister Day, especially when you're skiing with little kids, you do. No one would argue with you. It's a ridiculous time to be skiing. It's dangerous going downhill to possibly get uphill, and 90% of the people out there are going to have bad races and bad days. Okay? It's not about the conditions being perfect. It's about the conditions being perfect for you. It's about realizing that maybe the secret or a trick to success is to realize what you prepared your whole life for and take advantage of it, even though you didn't know that you did it or that you did it on proper purpose. I think that most people's tomorrows are the sum of their sorrows. I think that most people's tomorrows are the sum of their sorrows, and I say that that's not enough. There has to be more. There has to be. There has to be more. It's not enough. It's not enough to just simply go through the process. There has to be more. I look at it like this. What can I take from the last 32 to 42 years of my life? I don't have to take anything. You see, at PHG, at VLG, we might do great things. We might have already done great things. It's not enough to just be on the train. It's not enough just to be in the race. Everybody was on the race that day. Okay? It's cluster day. It's go fast time. Okay? It's not enough to just wake up, punch the clock, do the 40, have a good day in one part, and not go after something else. And I think that the problem is, is that we sit around and we wait, and we wait, and we wait, and we hope that it's like a race where someone comes up to us and says, hey, it's go fast time. It's cluster day. You focus on what you know how to do, and this is going to work out really well for you. It's not enough to just, there has to be more. There has to. There has to be more in what you've done already. If you had a plan, and you're working your plan, and your plan started when you were 20 years old, that's outstanding. I'm guessing none of us are like, maybe. If you had a plan that started a few years ago and you're working it, awesome. But most of us have been running, not just us, but a lot of people have been walking around through the woods for quite a long time, waiting. You see, we like to say things like, when the stars align, I'm going to take advantage of something, and I'm going to tell you a little secret about stars aligning. You can go pick any star in the sky and draw a perfectly straight line for any amount of distance, and you're going to run into another star. Not any amount of distance, but eventually you're going to run into another star. And you can keep doing that for time and all eternity, and you're going to keep finding these lines of stars that are absolutely perfectly aligned. My point is that the stars are already aligned. You simply have to change your point of view a little bit to take it out and see them. Okay? I say it's cluster day. I say it's go fast day because we have to do, there has to be something else out there. There has to be, there has to be more. The question is, are you going to wait for someone else to tell you this is your time, or are you going to stop and take a look and take a look back and say, what's the trick? What have I prepared my whole life for? What can I take advantage of right now? How are you going to take advantage when your ship comes in if you're not a sailor? Well, it's a ship. That's great. What do you know you're waiting for? Hopefully nothing. Okay? The sum of your moral tomorrows just can't be, or should I say your tomorrow just can't be the sum of your sorrows. You've prepared your whole life for one moment. Your whole life has prepared you for something. They say that all roads lead to Rome. But those roads were not all built by Romans. They were beat by people who understood that when you have a destination that you want to get to, there's a there's a path and a process that you go through for that destination. And I say that most of us have already gotten to a certain degree of that destination and not taken the time to stop, turn around, and see what our path is built us on. And maybe you're there, probably you're not. The question is why? It's go fast day now. It's cluster day. And I speak specifically to the people in this room when I say that because there's a lot of good things happening. And if we were all 21 and 22, I don't know that I can stand up here and say that.
because we would be a different, but we're not. Okay? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's just enough. Maybe there isn't anything more. Maybe someone comes along at some point in time, pats you on the back, and says, Man, you're doing great. You got it all figured out. All you got to do is this, this, and that. But I don't know if that. It happens in sports. That's why we love sports. It happens in school. That's why we love school. And it happens sometimes in a place of work. But with you and here, what really makes life worth living? I say this gold class thing. That's all I know about shrimp business. I should have uh, prefaced by you know having everybody to think about their takeaways. I don't think this. Is